we meet uh, foreign ministers, as you know very well, at least once uh, a month. And uh, most of the uh, really important and strategic international issues are uh, discussed and debated uh, and partially agreed upon, uh, I'd say, on a daily basis. So when we discuss about, uh, let's say, sanctions or restrictive measures, whatever you call them, vis-a-vis uh, -vis Iran or, or Syria or Belarus, I mean, all that is, uh, that is now uh, uh, a common uh, policy. There might be different approaches, but, uh, but the purpose of the exercise is precisely uh, to, to find a, a common uh, uh, platform. And in most cases, I would say, not in all cases, recognizing that, in many, many cases, we do find a common, a common consensus at the end. So if you look at the sanction policy of European Union, uh, in, in all cases, uh, up till now, we found uh, consensus. And this is despite the fact that member states uh, uh, are uh, impacted or affected uh, by the sanctions in a very different uh, 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 way and different measure. Some are more severely affected uh, than others. And despite that, we come to a common, let's say, consensus at the end of the day. What we, I think, should recognize is that there has been some progress. Uh, and we are probably uh, more united in most of the international issues than we were before, even in the Middle East peace process. Uh, 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 issue which is up sometimes referred to as 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 uh, as, um, as a divisive issue, as I said. Even there, uh, objectively, we can recognize that European Union is a more important player or actor now on the international scene than it was uh, two uh, or 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 three uh, uh, years ago. Of course, uh, I. Didn't want to say that uh, that uh, competencies uh, of the national uh, of the nation states of the member states or national competencies uh, disappeared or vanished or indeed uh, have been reduced significantly. That's not what I uh, I, I want to say. Uh, the real issue is where are the dividing lines, and those dividing lines you cannot determine because they are moving and they are changing especially in the field of common uh, 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 foreign security policy, you cannot really carve out an area where you say, okay, this is common and this is, uh, this is national. That's impossible. Yes, Europe is in crisis, but uh, I believe Europe is uh, slowly and progressively uh, coming out of, of this uh, uh, crisis. By the way, crisis, of course, it has been said many, many times. It's a strange thing. Uh, it also distorts sometimes our thinking because we are under the impact, psychological impact of the crisis. At the same time, crisis can be very useful because it brings things uh, to the surface. So we recognize uh, things which we would not have recognized uh, otherwise without the crisis. And uh, for that reason, a crisis generates uh, uh, action. Uh, it generates a uh, reaction, which is not always the best way because uh, pro-action would, uh, would be, of course, more useful. But still, uh, human nature is that uh, when you are in crisis, then you react to it. And that's exactly what Europe has been doing uh, for now almost four years, and uh, again, uh, I would say not without success, despite the huge challenges. The markets uh, are volatile. Uh, things happen on the markets uh, uh, in hours, in minutes, <coughs> maybe in days. Now, political decisions reacting to those market developments uh, do need time. You may criticize politicians that they are slow, they are reactive, they, uh, they do not take immediately the right decisions, but please, these are politicians. Uh, these are not exchange rates. Uh, so, uh, and especially in a democratic uh, system, politicians do need time, and they do even have to ask 
some, uh, some, some institutions like, for instance, national parliaments or uh, even constitutional courts in some cases, and this has to be respected. So the market also has to understand and recognize that, that, that politics cannot have the same speed uh, as, uh, as, as the market. Now, this particularly applies to the European Union, where you have an extremely complex uh, and complicated institutional system, where you have a thing which you call community method, which is by nature complex and slow and long. Many of us, we always keep repeating that please be careful about the community method because we need it, especially medium-sized countries like my country, we need the community method. We feel more comfortable about the community method than uh, intergovernmental decision-making, which might be right, might be wrong, but where we have much less possibility to participate. The real issue here is uh, how much we are divided and how much will be divided in the upcoming years. Now, this is, of course, uh, the one million dollar question everybody asks. We have now a uh, crossroad, everybody says so. Which way we go? Either we go in the direction of uh, so-called differentiated integration, uh, which is called fragmentation, uh, which is called uh, multi-speed Europe, which is the wrong name, or multi-level Europe, is probably more correct, uh, a fragmentation which might even end in uh, the progressive dismantling of the present institutional system. Now, the other way, some people say, no, no, it's uh, not that, it's just the opposite. Uh, we'll have to deepen and strengthen integration, and we'll have a more and more united Europe by the time, especially if we want to uh, cope with the uh, difficulties stemming uh, from the uh, economic uh, and financial uh, uh, crisis. Well, I don't think that, the, um, that the, um, this, this crossroad uh, or the so-called uh, uh, forking path is as simple as that. And that's why I am more optimistic about uh, this risk of fragmentation, and I believe uh, that the basic interests uh, which, uh, which, 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 which uh, bring us together and keep us together uh, are, uh, are stronger uh, than uh, the divisive uh, 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 forces. But at the same time, we do have divisions, Eurozone, non-Eurozone, North and South, you know, uh, the hardworking North and the lazy Dolce Farniente South, which is nonsense, by the way, but, you know, again, this is a common uh, conventional wisdom now. We have the big ones and we have the small ones. We have the old ones and the new ones, which is something very much rejected by the new ones. Uh, who is really new? No one knows, but never mind. Uh, so, uh, but divisions are there, and I think uh, the question, uh, what is the Hungarian interest in all that, uh, can be answered very simply. We are basically interested in a, in a more united and uh, a more integrated uh, and a stronger and a deeper Europe.